If you're a film shooter, well, the last couple of years haven't been that much fun for you, I guess. And I'm not talking about lockdowns and all that crap. Because film stocks are being discontinued and among those are some really popular ones like Fuji Pro 4H for instance. On top of that, even the ones that are still being manufactured are barely available. And their scarcity is also driving prices up. This is especially true for pretty much all color negative film stocks. That being said, it's not all doom and gloom because there's alternatives like motion picture film stocks uh, to fill the gap. Nico from Nico's Photography Show just recently talked about it in a video. I'll link it down below so I think it's very interesting to watch. And also there's new color film stocks that are being introduced which is great but that doesn't mean that those aren't affected by the availability issues. I'm still waiting for my Sinister 400D Pro Pack and also the new Orwo color film. Because of the situation some film shooters might quit shooting film entirely. Personally, I shot less film over the last couple of months than I used to, but I can't wait to change that up again very soon. I'll cover the whole shooting film in 2022 in a separate video because I think there's more to it than you might think. The question now is, what is your motivation to shoot film? Is it the whole process that slows you down? Is it the simplicity of film cameras with no bells and whistles? Or is it just the aesthetics? If that's the case, then there might be a solution already available for you. Normally I'm not a massive fan of emulating the film look with digital files, but the Lightroom plugin Dehancer changed my mind because it can do some seriously cool things. For video shooters, Dehancer has been available for a while and it got a lot of praises for color grading and some cool effects that you could easily add to your footage. Now Dehancer is also available for Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Affinity Photo and also Capture One. But instead of talking about it, I should rather show you what it can do. Alright guys, before I show you how I edit the photos with Dehancer, a quick disclaimer. Dehancer, the Dehancer team gave me this license for free to make a review. Um, but I can say whatever I want, that's what I'm going to do. I will let you know what I like and maybe things that could be improved a little bit. But yeah, other than that, let's jump right into it. All right, here we are in Lightroom and the first image that I want to edit is a selfie that I took in Ireland on a boat with a Panasonic S5 and a 24 1.8 wide open and as you can see the lens is really sharp. Okay, let's start. Uh, there's some recommended settings on the Dehancer website that you should use um, when you want to use the plugin but I just ignore it for now. Um, maybe you can figure out yourself. Um, for me, I just use what works for me and what works for me is just bring, in this case, bringing the exposure up, uh, bring the highlights a little bit down, maybe open up the shadows ever so slightly. And that's about it. The rest I will do in Dehancer. So let's open Dehancer, add it in, Dehancer Lightroom plugin. And in this case, um, it opens up the photo as a 16-bit TIFF file in Dehancer. All right, here we are in Dehancer. So, and by the way, this not only works for RAW files, also for, like I said, for TIFF files. So it's, it probably also works for JPEGs, but I wouldn't recommend using JPEGs, but in theory, you could. All right, here we are in the plugin. And let's delete this. There's a small bug here. <laughs> that if you have presets they show up again for some reason it's pretty strange but anyway so this could be addressed in uh, an update easily I guess. So here on the left side we have the film stocks and first of all here is um, color you can choose between color negative, motion picture, color positive, black and white, instant, exotic and unsorted whatever that means but we'll see. Maybe let's just pick unsorted. Okay, this already looks really nice. It's very cool looking. I mean, in terms of uh, color temperature, uh, not bad, but let's try something else. Let's go to color negative. 
And I've already tried this photo and one film stock I really liked for this is the Natura 1600. Um, I don't know what it is, but I really like the look and maybe I'm biased because I like the film. I like the Natura 1600. Unfortunately, it's gone and it's super, super expensive. I think a roll goes for 50 or 100 bucks on eBay, which is absolutely insane. I still have some in the freezer, but I don't want to use them. But at one point I will. All right. Um, like I said, I've already added this photo and to make it a little bit shorter, I've saved it here. So you can save some uh, presets that you create yourself, which is pretty neat because then it's very easy to apply to other photos. Because if you apply the look, the, just the film look, the, the colors and stuff, you can still adjust it here on the right. And there's some changes I've made and they make it a little bit more cinematic and more film looking. All right, um, here there's the, you can adjust the, the color temperature and all these things, I haven't touched them. Uh, you can do um, to your liking and also you can um, adjust the white point and the black point. And to reset it, just double click on the slider and that's about it. All right, if we come down here, um, there's one thing that's pretty cool, that's the print here under the section print. You can choose between, um, this case it's set to Kodak um, glossy paper, but you can also use print film, which gives it a little more cinematic look, I would say. Um, or a lock, and it's very flat, or linear. But the glossy paper already looks pretty good, I would say. All right, let's choose that. And you can also make adjustments to that if you want to. Then the color head, you can adjust the colors. Uh, if there's a, um, a color, a tint or whatever, you can easily adjust it here if you want to. But that's not what I think is the most interesting part that is about to come very soon. All right, guys, now I want to show you this one thing or these maybe two options you have in the software that totally sold me and that look really nice. And it's something you probably cannot do or you most likely cannot do in Lightroom but you can do it in here and it's pretty nice. So let me show you. All right, um, if we go down here, there's film grain, of course. Um, the film grain is pretty much the same that you would see in Lightroom, the same option, but here there's more sliders you can adjust. And to be honest, I think overall the grain, oh, I like it a little bit more compared to Lightroom because you have a little bit more options to play with. But on this one, Natural 1600 should have some grain, so I applied it and to me it looks really good. It takes away a little bit sharpness um, and the uh, digital look gets lost a little bit. So it's not looking too digital, even though it's digital, but yeah, that's really nice. And then when we go down here, there's Halation and Bloom. Let's look at Halation first. So Halation, what it does is, uh, let's turn it off. Maybe you can already spot it. Yes, it gives you a similar effect when shooting a Cinestill film and the halation layer that you will get around these um, high contrast parts of the image. In case here, for instance, where you have the white and the black, there's a high contrast in between, so you will get halation. And also there's a mask mode. When you use that, you can see which areas are affected, which is pretty nice. And let's zoom in so you can see it a little bit better on here. Let's turn it off. Yeah. That's pretty cool, to be honest. I've never been a, a big fan of the halation layer in um, Cinestill 800T, for instance. But here you can just add it if you want. And if it's not fitting the image, you can leave it out, so that's pretty cool. If you shoot Cinestill 800T, it's just there. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Unless you shoot um, the 500T, the original one, and develop an ECN2, then you won't have the elation. But some people love it, and especially for those people, this is pretty amazing and yeah, really, really nice. Probably my favorite part of the software. You can uh, play with here with the settings and make it even crazier. Let's zoom out, but yeah, I think this is too much. Let's dial it back a little bit. Um, maybe let's go back to where it was. So yeah, I mean, 
incredible. What can I say? So the next is Bloom, and Bloom is um, is pretty much affecting the highlights and it's softening them. It's I would say it's similar to using um, a black promised filter, kind of similar. So again, let's turn it off, turn it on. So the highlights get they get a little softer overall. And I really like that because it also takes away this digital look so it gets more an organic look and that's actually pretty cool. So let's leave it on. Or let's show you the mask. Similar to the relation, you also have a mask here so you can see which areas are affected and you can play around with the sliders, make it less or even bump it up. Up. What, I'm, what am I doing here? Ah, okay. So, halation, mask off, impact, let's dial it down a little. Just around here, and I think overall, that's it. There's nothing to do. You can also um, add some vignetting if you want to. Yeah, why not? All right, image number one, done. So this already, if you compare, uh, let's compare to the original one. So here on the left, we have the one that I just adjusted in the enhancer. And on the right, we have the one just coming out of Lightroom with some small adjustments. So I would say the one on the left looks way better. All right, guys, let's adjust another one. Let's uh, pick a street photography photo and let's adjust that one. All right, here we go. Let's do this one here. That's um, I took this in um, Taipei with a flash at night. And I've already made a, a sort of a preset for it. I'll show you. And I will show you what I did in the preset. So here in this case, uh, let's do some adjustments here first. Let's bring the highlights down just slightly. Let's bring up the shadows just a little bit. All right, I think that's already perfect for editing in Dehancer. So let's open it up. Dehancer Lightroom plugin, here we go. Okay, here it is. Let's make it a little bit big, bigger so you can see a little bit better. All right, that's my edit of the photo. Um, and you can see the halation is back. Yeah, so we now have a Sinistel 800T shot. Take, took, or took that in Taipei with a flash and my M6. No, I didn't, but it kind of looks like that. So what I did here, I used um, as the preset, I used the 800T, the Sinistel 800T, and I did some adjustments over here. And what I did was basically I adjusted or I added some um, grain because, I mean, 800T, yes, then then needs with some grain, right? And I added halation, so let's turn it off. And as you can see here, it's a quite a dramatic effect. And I think here it fits pretty well. Um, yeah, it adds to the photo. I'm pretty sure there would be a lot of people thinking that this was shot in 800T. <laughs> it looks very convincing to me. So what do you think? But overall, I think to me, very, very convincing. Okay. I added a little bit of bloom, a little bit of vignette. But that's about it, guys. I mean, there's not that much else to do on this photo. So, and as I just told you that you can um, save this as a preset. So what you do is if you adjust it, whatever you want to adjust, then you just click plus, then you give it a name and save it. That's pretty much it. Oh man, this looks really cool. So uh, let's open it up in Lightroom. Okay, here in Lightroom, maybe I would just bring up the white a little bit. But yeah, that's, I'd say that's pretty much it. The photo's finished. Now, if we have another one, like maybe that's this one, for instance, and 
let's bring up the exposure, highlights down as before, let's bring up the shadows. Also I shot this in Taipei, same day, also with um, the Leica Q and the flash. So we are now here. Uh, one thing that is really cool in the software is um, if you done an edit to a photo and but you you there's no you did not uh, save it as a preset. What you can do is just press L and it will apply the same settings that you used the last time you opened the software. And that is really cool, especially if you want to edit more than just one photo. Maybe you have ten photos and you you want them to have the same look. Because one problem with the software is that you cannot open more than one photo. And I asked them about it, about it, and they said it's a limitation of Lightroom. But they are working on it, and they might have a solution in the future. But right now, that's what it is. Um, if you have to edit hundreds of photos, it's not ideal. But if you open them one by one and you just press L, uh, it saves you quite a bit of time and makes the process a little bit easier and faster. And that's what I did here. Um, yeah, I mean, already looks good, so, okay. Now we have the photo here, I will also adjust the white point a little bit. And that's about it, so I have my 800T shot right here. Okay, let's try another one. Maybe let's use this one that I took in Acapulco with the um, Fuji X-E4 and maybe you remember uh, the episode. Okay, let's bring up the exposure, uh, highlights down, maybe the shadows up a little bit. And this already looks good to me. Let's open it up in Dehancer. All right, here we go. Now we are in Dehancer and let's go through the film stocks that we have here. Maybe let's try something that we haven't tried yet. That is maybe, let's go to color positive film. Uh, let's see what we see here. Aqua Chrome, expired, okay. Nah, not for me. Uh, Provia 100F, not bad. Velvia 100, Velvia 50, expired um, Ectochrome and Exper uh, they, they call it experimental. It's um, Kodak, Kodak Chrome 64. And to be honest, I like it. It looks really nice. Not bad. Very blue, the Ovo and the Polaroid. Nah. But the Kodak Chrome, yeah, it looks good. I mean, let's adjust it a little bit. Maybe the blacks. can make it look a little bit more faded. And also what you can do is here on uh, the left side, you have push and pull. Uh, what it does is if you slide it over to push, it will increase the contrast like it would if you push a film. And in this direction to pull, it's lowering the contrast. And also, maybe the color shift a little bit. No, not really, it's just the contrast. It's probably similar to just using the uh, contrast slider. But for all of you that are familiar with these uh, terms here, push and pull, and you know what it is, you can adjust it in here instead of just using um, a contrast slider. So I think overall this already looks really good. Let's see, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to add grain here because um, 64 Kodachrome, there's not that much grain. A little bit, of course, but I think this looks pretty good. Okay, so let's see them side by side. All right, here we go. On the right side, we have the original, the raw file, and on the left, we have the edited one. And I think overall, I like it way more than this one here without any color look whatsoever. Looks really, really good. Okay, let's see what we can do. What else we can do? Let's try 
maybe let's try this one here. Um, this photo I took in uh, Campeche in Mexico, also with the XE4, and was just around sunset. Okay, let's try this. Uh, let's maybe, I think exposure looks already pretty good. Let's lower the highlights just a little bit. That's about it. And let's open it up in the answer. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's maybe let's try the black and white ones here um, just to show you. I would probably not use it. I don't know what it is. I tend to not convert color images to black and white because if I want to shoot black and white, I use black and white film or I use the monochrome. So I would probably personally not use it, but they are here. Um, Aqua Scala 200X Acros. And you can already see Acros has more, it's more punchy, more contrast. HP5. Ah, XP2, super, a really nice film. Double X, also nice. Hmm. Yeah, there's some options here, but like I said, I wouldn't use it, so let's just use something that I would personally choose. Let's go to, uh, let's try the motion picture first. And we have the Eterna. 20 looks good. But maybe we should pick something that a lot of people like. Let's go to uh, color negative and let's try a favorite film of mine, which is Fuji Pro 400H. This one, yeah, I like that. Uh, Pro 400H, it's so sad to see it go. I mean, it's still, still available, but who knows for how long. Let's try Portra 400 just to see. Doesn't look that much different to be honest. A little bit, not much. Let's stick with Portra 400. Maybe let's bring down the white point a little bit. Maybe around here. Because it looked like it's uh, blowing out the highlights over here. So let's bring it down a little bit. And maybe let's add some no relation, some maybe some grain. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Maybe let's go to some around here. Yeah, that looks good to me. That looks like Portra 400 grain would look. So here we are in Lightroom again, and let's, on this one, maybe let's bring up the exposure a little bit. Let's bring down the highlights, and let's compare to the original RAW file. And, okay, interesting. Um, it looks very similar, to be honest, that it's not a huge difference, there is the difference. On uh, on the floor here, you can see here's a little bit more greenish compared to here. It's a little reddish, so there's a difference. Not a huge difference, and but overall, I think the original one already looks pretty good. This a little bit better maybe, but you can see the the grain, the added grain. Let's wait for the photo to load up, and you can see here there's the grain. Uh, gives gives the photo a little bit more texture. All right, let's check out one more photo and edit it. It's a photo that you will see in the next episode that will come next Sunday. So let's edit it and I will not talk about it too much, but you might get an idea, but let's check out the photo. All right, and it's this one here. Uh, you can see it's cropped, uh, not commenting on that. Uh, let's bring up the exposure and maybe yeah, around here. Let's bring down the highlights a little bit up to here. And let's open it up in our favorite software here, the Hansher Lightroom plugin. Okay, here we go. Let's see what option we have here. Um, I mean, the, all these film stocks, they will, oh my God, that's a very <laughs> different look. 
Uh, this doesn't look bad. Okay, Provia. Provia looks really nice here. Uh, okay. Fuji, Duster 100, 400, oh, Duster 400, man, was one of my preferred films, but yeah, it's not there anymore. Instax, nah, not my thing. You can play in here with four hours, there's so, so many op options. And what I usually do, I, I will just choose some of them that I like and I will just um, bookmark them, so to speak, and then I will just go through them. Uh, because there's otherwise there's so many too many options and it would take me forever. Yeah, let's let's use a preset. Oh look, who's back? Our favorite preset here. <laughs> let's okay. Yeah, this one. It's 800T added grain. And added elation, you don't see that much in here because um, let's go down. Let's see where's the elation. Let's, if you go into the mask mode, there's not much. Maybe a little bit. That's all right. Okay, let's open it up. And now we have this super wide photo. And let's adjust the white point. Just around here. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. It looks very X Pen ish to me. <laughs> All right, like I said, you will see next episode next week. So look forward to that. It will be a pretty cool episode. All right, guys. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for editing uh, here. And I think you get a good understanding how the software works, what it can do. And it can do a lot of things that you cannot just do in Lightroom. Uh, maybe in Photoshop, but it would take you way longer to do that. And here it's very easy. And I think it's pretty cool. I will probably use this software uh, for my personal work. And also um, if I need to do some photography jobs, I will probably also use it because, I mean, I really like the looks. I might not add too much grain, <laughs> but yeah, it looks really good. So I think that's it for this editing part of the video. There you have it guys. If you want to try out the Enhancer yourself, simply download the trial version. The link will be in the video description. And if you like what you see and you want to buy a license, use the code TRSR10 to save 10% on your purchase. All right, that's it for today's video. If you like it, then you know what to do. Smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and we will see each other very soon in the next one. Until then, auf Wiedersehen.